This tutorial is to elaborate on one of my write-ups in the tips and tricks section of museresources.com. I want to dive kind of deep into color and recoloring objects that are in your Muse websites. And honestly, without these tips and tricks, you could be wasting a lot of time. So uh, bear with me for a few minutes. I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to save you an absolute ton of time. So this title, Color Your Life Up, uh, consists of this sort of demo page here that's built on a color palette, kind of vintage retro colors. Uh, and you can see here that the color of this background box is the same as the color of these icons up here. And this blue that's being used for this icon down here is the same blue that's being used up here. And then I got this pink color going on and I got this beige color going on. And, and there's consistency. This is built on a palette of five colors, no more than five colors. And if I go back to Adobe Muse, you could see here that if I take a look at my color swatches here, uh, I have saved one, two, three, four, five colors uh, in addition to the default colors. Uh, and in case you guys don't know, there is a little button next to the trash can in the bottom right of the, of the color palette that allows you to save a color. So when you create a color, if you plan on reusing it, go ahead and save it. It'll save you a little bit of time. But here's where it gets really cool. Um, because I've used this light beige color here and I've used it again here on this text and I've used it again here as the background and I've used it again down here on this text and on this text if I decide that I don't love the color or if I want to warm it up I'd have to do a bunch of steps to fix all these objects normally but if you save a color and then you apply the saved color to all of these objects no matter how many objects there are no matter how many pages they're spread across if I go back to this color on the color palette and double click on it. Don't change it here. Double click on it so it opens a new window and change the color here. And when you change it here, watch, I'll warm it up a little bit and I'll make it brighter, so closer to white. And when I hit OK, the background just changed, the text here changed, the text here changed. Everything that was associated with that color that had been saved just changed. So it almost behaves as like a graphic style. but with relevance only to color, of course. So if you work within a color palette and you change your mind about your color palette, you can change your entire website just by going back and double clicking on the swatch and making a change there. I can change it back, I can hit OK, boom, everything just changed again. Personally, I prefer the lighter color. It's a little extra contrast to read. And I've got this brown color too. So if I select this background here and I go to my swatches, I double click on this brown color. It's a little too purple for me. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit, go into more of the red orange hue. I'll hit OK. So that warms up that color and it warmed up the icons up here. That's because they were associated with to the same swatch that had been saved ahead of time. So if I just chose brown, 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 uh, and they happen to be the same brown, that's not good enough. You have to actually save the swatch, and then you have to choose that swatch for the color of each other object. But you guys might be wondering how these icons just changed. These icons are graphics. Um, in fact, uh, I could preview this in the browser real quick. And if I preview it in the browser, you can see that these are individual graphics. So how on earth did the color change? If you guys aren't familiar with this trick, this is a cool one. And I've been using this like crazy to save time. Uh, if I have a PNG graphic, that's a graphic that has no background. It, it basically has a transparent background. Let me hop over to this blank example here. And I will uh, make this box 100% page width, get it kind of out of the way. And then I'll reach to this PNG on my desktop and I'll drop it onto my canvas. Make it about yay big. Now, if I drop a PNG in there, uh, one, you guys can see that it's being rendered kind of sketchy. The edges don't look so good. When I preview it in the browser, it re-renders it. It kind of decides all over again how that PNG is going to look by creating a new file at that size. Before I had previewed it in the browser, it hadn't created the smaller version of that because this PNG in its native form, the one that's sitting on my desktop, is much bigger than we see it here. So by making it smaller, it gets a little zigzaggy, right? So we know that Muse has the ability to redraw a PNG graphic. So here's the really cool part. If I decide that I want this to match this, First thing I got to do, again, I have to save this swatch. You can see here I have the color selected, but I don't have it saved. So I'm going to hit this little button here. It looks almost like a sticky note. I'm going to save the swatch. And then to recolor a PNG graphic, you can go up to Effects, 
and you can choose the very last tab which is glow now if you choose glow it does an outer glow by default it does a white outer glow but I'm gonna change the color of the glow to the swatch that I saved and you guys can see that color starting to bleed out what you want to do is you want to choose your color at 100% opacity and then the blur has a maximum of 250 pixels you want to make sure you set this at 250 so you don't have uh, well you'll see in a moment when I invert this to be an inner glow instead of an outer glow you want to make sure that the color bleeds all the way into the center where it meets itself so it becomes a solid color um, and setting this at 250 being that it's the maximum is sort of your insurance policy that it's all gonna meet up in the middle if your graphics really really huge then this won't work but for the average icon even a very large icon like this one uh, it works out and again, since Muse is able to redraw these PNG files, when I go and preview this in the browser, you don't have to worry about whether or not you're dealing with a browser that supports Inner Glow, uh, whether it supports CSS3, whether it's Internet Explorer 8 or later and all that. It actually created a PNG that is this color. It actually created a solid object with no funny business that is its own standalone file in that color so it's as if I went to Photoshop and recolored it and then dropped it back in but I didn't have to deal with any of that and again because this swatch is connected to this because they are the same swatch if I change the color of this bar at the top by double clicking on the swatch say I make it a vibrant red boom they both change everything stays together so using this inner glow trick and by saving swatches and double clicking on them to change the color you can recolor your entire website or take a client suggestion to make a color a little brighter or darker or more saturated uh, and, and it doesn't become a headache it's really a fantastic thing and if these color palettes are a challenge for you guys to put together I know I struggle to put together a good complimentary color palette um, I have added to museresources.com on the libraries page uh, a new section there is now a color palette section where you can download uh, the cooler pack one which is 15 of the most popular color palettes from Adobe cooler and then the second one the vintage super pack is actually 70 color palettes and when you download and install these here's my favorite part like this new website I saved one color swatch right I've just got this extra red color swatch which I could even go ahead and delete I don't really need that uh, but let's say I wanted that vintage color on, on this guy here and I wanted to build using that vintage color palette uh, I've got the vintage super pack installed here and if I expand it there are 70 colors to choose from which I can scroll through and I can preview and then when I decide on one that I like I can drag it in which shows me the swatches and then here's the cool part if you just go ahead and hit delete you still have them saved on your swatches so you can start using them immediately you don't have to use the eyedropper tool you drop it in there delete it out of there and boom it's saved if you drop it in there and you don't like it you will wanna hit undo instead of delete so that way it doesn't save the swatches to your list of swatches so this is a great resource it's gonna save a lot of people a lot of time I know it because colors can be a great challenge so head to museresources.com download the colors I'll have more colors soon as well as more tutorials coming soon to help us all save time if you like this, please subscribe. I've got plenty more stuff coming soon.